Well, where to begin? Yesterday, the uh, the AEW Dynamite show opened up with CM Punk coming out, and he decided he was going to cut a promo on Hangman Page. And it was not a planned comment. It was not part of any storyline. It, uh, it was CM Punk uh, demanding an apology from Hangman Page. And he came out, and because it was unscripted, he came out and he challenged Hangman Page to a match. He sat cross-legged in the middle of the ring waiting for him to come out. Of course, this was not in the script, so Hangman didn't come out. And then, hey, and then Punk just stands up and he calls him a coward. And then he moved on to John Moxley. And uh, for those of you that have no idea what's going on, um, there was a promo um, several months back when they were building up the CM Punk versus Hangman match. You probably remember it was a very intense promo. There was uh, a lot of stuff in it that people were asking, what's he talking about? Punk Punk coming in and we need to protect the locker room. I forget exactly what the uh, uh, situation... I, I forget all the exact verbiage, but the gist of it is that uh, Hangman was, uh, was upset with CM Punk. And he used that as part of his promo to build up the pay-per-view. Punk was very angry about that, and he's been angry about it ever since. And so he came out and he did what he did, demanding he he essentially dem he wants Punk or he wants Hangman to apologize for that promo. So this is all it has nothing to do with storyline, it has nothing to do with anything. And he went into business for himself, and you know he made Hangman uh, look. I mean, the Hangman's supposed to be the babyface here, and he made your babyface look like a coward. So anyway, uh, believe me, there were plenty of people backstage furious at uh, CM Punk because Hangman is a well-liked guy. Everybody loves Hangman. And they felt bad for him, and they were upset with Punk. Now, of course, Punk, he has friends as well, and he has supporters. And his supporters are angry because they believe that Hangman was the one who started this. And so why is, is CM Punk taking all of this heat when Hangman is the guy that started this whole thing? So anyway, uh, that's that's what happened in that promo, and then they they moved on. So I know I know it's wrestling. I know that people think that everything is a work, or this is like an MJF deal. I am telling you, I've talked to so many people. It's not. This is a real situation. It was called unprofessional. Literally, actually, by all sides. The the punk side believes that Hangman started this by being unprofessional, and the uh, uh, the Hangman folks think that Punk was unprofessional for making Hangman look like a fool last night at the beginning of the show. But it is not an angle to build up a match at All Out. It's not an angle to build up a match. Because as soon as this happened, they've already announced that uh, John Moxley and Punk are having a match for the, both titles. It's a title versus title match, interim title versus AEW title, next week on the show. So as soon as that was announced, everybody starts trying to put everything together. Ah, oh, well, maybe, uh, you know, Punk's going to win next week, and then it's going to be Punk and Hangman at All Out. Maybe Hangman's going Hangman's to do that. Hangman has nothing to do with any of this. Hangman is not involved in any of this. It is something that uh, Punk said and now everybody's trying to figure out how hangman he doesn't play into this so whatever they're doing next week it is not leading to something with the hangman now will punk and hangman have another match again someday probably i can't say for sure but i i can say that there are no plans right now for a cm punk hangman page match so that's the first big story coming out of Dynamite. The second story, obviously, is that they are doing a John Moxley CM Punk match for both belts on the show next week. What are they going to do? Well, everybody's come up with all of these theories about the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I've heard people say, well, you know, Punk must be hurt. They don't think he can do a pay-per-view match. Well, if they don't think he can do a pay-per-view match, why is he doing a match next week? That That's not it. The pay-per-view is in Chicago. So that would suggest that Punk could win, 
Because Punk's obviously going to be, you know, in the main event of Chicago. Why would you pull Punk from Chicago? So what are they going to do here? There's, there's, there's many options that they could do. But uh, the impression that I've been given is whatever they're going to do, they've got a plan. And one way or another, there is going to be a match with both titles on the line next week. This is not, you know, we're going to do this or that and pull the match or whatever. They're doing the match on TV next week. And whatever they're doing, they have a plan that's going to lead to All Out. So what that is, I guess we'll find out. I see everybody DQ, count out, blah, 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 blah. They don't do that often. You can count on one hand the number of DQs, so... I mean, it's possible. I'm not sure how uh, doing a match with a DQ is going to get people more interested in the match at All Out. So uh, we shall see. But the match is taking place. It is the biggest match they've ever booked on Dynamite next week on the show for free. So those are the two big stories coming out of the Dynamite show. The show was great. It was a great show, with the exception of the first two minutes or whatever. But uh, any thoughts on any of this, this mic before we go on and we can answer questions or whatever? Well, well, I don't know. If I'm a fan, I don't think that first two minutes there was anything wrong with it at all. In fact, it, it, it gave me a lot of intrigue. I want to know what's going on here between these two and what are any of the – I see you, know, you talked about people talking about DQs and things like what they theorize what could happen – with that match, is there anybody theorizing what the beef is here uh, at, at its core between CM Punk and Hangman Page? I just Obviously, explained all of it. Well, I no. explained all of it. Brian, time yes. out. Before you get all jumpy and everything, I know you explained all of it. But there's obviously an issue here that these two men decided to bring up in promos leading into their first match, which obviously is now really stuck in CM Punk's crawl. And obviously he can be, has a reputation of being a streperous guy, a a moody guy, maybe somebody who can't get along with everybody in that locker room. But have you ever heard of anything, anything specifically that people maybe can point to? Because if this is one of the biggest stories coming out of it, I mean, it was something that CM Punk did, but it's a, you know, self-inflicted wound here. All you're going to do is get people talking as to what it is that would cause two fan favorites to want to air their dirty laundry in front of everybody. Well, something, CM Punk did something that uh, it was a it was a backstage deal. Now, does, and it, predate, does it predate his time there and carried itself? It, it was or? something. It was something AEW related that happened backstage. And there's a million. There's a million uh, people have all sorts of theories, and uh, the predominant theories, you know, they very mel- they very well may be right. But basically, you know, uh, Hangman said something to the effect of, you know, you're putting on a uh, you're putting on a friendly face. Big but act. you're a locker room cancer. And so that was that was what he said. And Punk took uh, exception to that, and he was very upset about it. And, uh, and now he's gotten his receipt on national TV, yeah. which made Hangman look like a fool. You challenged the babyface to come out for a fight for the title, and the babyface didn't come well, out. It's, I tell you what, he certainly threw down the gauntlet not only uh, for Hangman Page to respond in a, in a way, but for AEW to see how they let him respond because you're going to have to let him get some sort of shot back. And you're going to want to play this to the people to some point, too, because, you know, personal issues do truly draw money. And there's a way to make this work where everybody's a winner. But the two guys involved have got to be able to work with each other on that. Sanga versus Lee. Stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron. Pull, um, puts elbow on her chin. Threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? Bead legend. A that. little guy? It's now wrong. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. <laughs> no. no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. You got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.